Okay, congratulations. I mean, listen, dominant performance start to finish. I'm sure you would have liked to get the finish if you could, but obviously you, you win every round. So as you sit there now, how did you feel about your performance tonight? Um, it's slowly starting, I'm slowly starting to accept it as a great performance, but right now I'm just, I wanted to punch him in the face more, but credit to him and his boxing coach, uh, uh, I'll say they improved their boxing a bit. So I think they thought that would be enough, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Yeah. We talked about, you know, you being a performer. Uh, man, you know, the crowd in there tonight, I know that's, you know, not what gets done in the cage, but did that have any influence on your performance tonight? Because it seemed like vintage Israel had assigned you tonight. Mm, I'm a troll sometimes, and you see me trolling them all week, so I just thought I'd keep it going. Sorry, I'm making pizza. It's good, though. <laughs> um, Take your time. Yeah. Um, yeah, vintage. Vintage me, definitely. Just having fun. I did have fun in there, I'll say that. Yeah. You got a chance to show your wrestling a little bit. You got a chance to show your, your, your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. I'm curious, I mean, do you enjoy getting to show those kind of sides of you, or would you prefer to, to never even have to get to those moments? No, I do want to show. I want to, I want, <laughs> there was a point, I think there was the, 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 my favorite bit of the fight, actually, so far was when he thought he had a rear naked choke, and he was, he probably got excited, like, yes, this is it, my moment, ah! And then, I, I wasn't even bothered, I wasn't threatened, and I, I turned it on him, and I put my hand on his neck, you know, like, <laughs> that, that X-rated shit when you choke someone and you look him in the eyes and I saw his, his I swear to God I saw his soul leave his eyes I saw it and I, I was said to him I said to him you're scared aren't you you're scared aren't you I said that to him find the tape and I felt very powerful in that moment just, just taking his soul away but he's tough I'll, I'll give him that he's tough but um, yeah that moment for me was very powerful because I, I took hope away from him I was just saying, I mean, you guys haven't had the greatest relationship over the years, but did he earn your respect a little bit? I mean, he took a lot of damage tonight. Mm, taking damage doesn't equal earning respect, but uh, I'm, uh, do I respect him? That's a good question, John. Um, do I respect? I, I don't know, because even at the, at the end of the fight, I was like, you can at least say I won that one. He's like, what? This, this one? I was like, are you serious? He's like, I won that. I'm like, oh, no, no, we can't, we can't. I just, I, Eric Cartman mentality, man. It's just, you got to believe your own bullshit sometimes. But hey, like I said, I'm believing my own hype. <laughs> wow. After that, and he thinks he won, who's believing what hype? I was going to say, look like, you know, usually we see guys come together and kind of bury the hatchet at the end of it. That's that's not what happened. I told him, I was the first thing I said was like, hey, I don't like you and you don't like me, but this is martial arts at the end of the race. At the end of the day, have some respect. So, yeah, uh, I mean... He better respect me. I just want him to just after my last fight, you know, I won't say who, but certain people thought I won that fight. Certain people, you know, in my camp thought I won that fight. But I was just like, nah, it was close, but I'll take the L from that one and I'll grow. I will learn. If I wanted to have his mentality, I would hold on to that. And I would keep going after Jan and like trying to like like it's, it's so stupid that's not how you grow how you grow is you learn from your mistakes you go back to the drawing board and you improve you become better from them L loss is a part of life losses make you better just i don't know where, uh, where this whole mentality comes from that oh you took a loss and oh that's it you're over but no nah, it's just it's, it's it's part of life take it and let it let it improve you so my advice to him would be just like just look yourself in the mirror tonight maybe not tonight give it a week let it let things settle down look yourself in the mirror and be like look israel is better than you israel is better than you izzy is way better than you you couldn't do shit to him but i'm gonna get better from this and i swear to you his next fight will improve if he does the work right but you have to just you gotta let it go you gotta let it go yeah Last thing for me, it's clear the next fight, right? Even Dana came in here tonight and said, yes, you know, the rematch with Whitaker, that's the fight that needs to happen next. I guess the key is where can it happen and when can it happen? I mean, it's tough for us to know. I know you want to have it in Auckland, but who knows when that might can happen. So, I mean, is there a date circled on the calendar? Do you sit out and wait until it's okay to fight in Auckland? What's what's the plan? I don't wait around. You know me. This is my third fight in nine months. I don't fucking wait around like the rest of these guys or the rest of these champions who talk about being active. I don't just talk. I don't talk about it. I just do it. I'm an active champion, so 
I'm putting it out there into the universe, into the ether that I want it in Auckland. Um, but I mean, uh, I uh, I don't like too much free time, especially right now while I'm in the prime. So yeah, could fucking open Fight Island number number three or third time, Fight Island third time maybe. But if not, maybe back in America somewhere. But it would be so awesome if it was in Auckland and I could do it on my home turf. It's, it's real. Crazy. When we sat down on Wednesday, you'd mentioned that if you didn't knock him out, you wanted it to be 5-0. Yeah. Are you excited about this 5-0? Yeah. Uh, I want to watch the fight again. That's one thing. I still haven't had my my moment to myself after my fight. So you guys know what that is, <laughs> where I get to reflect on everything. Um, I'm excited that it was a clean sweep. I'm, I'm excited I had fun in there. I'm excited I was able to be lucid and just and, and even just listen to my coach as well and, and excel. Um, but yeah, I'll still give myself like a, I don't know, a C plus. C plus? Yeah, C plus. Wow. You were having success with the with the with the leg kicks. Yeah. And then you went away from it. What well, was there a reason for that? Was that a strategy? Um, I was gonna go back to it. I did at the end a little bit. Um uh, I got a little bit over eager in the end, to the point that even my coaches had to like, get your ass back in the center of the octagon, get you, do. like, because I try to like showcase my grappling a little bit more. But if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. If you don't need it, don't use it. So yeah, uh, eh, eh, man. <laughs> so everyone was saying that you know the mystique. Israel lost his last fight. He's been figured out. So going into this fight. He's gonna take him down. How did that work out to me? Well, fuck what everyone thinks. You know, you're only a, you, you're not as good as they say you are. You're not as bad as they say you are. All that matters is how you see yourself. Um, I never. Everyone's telling me this week or saying this week on the internet, like, oh, he's gonna whoop Vittori. He's gonna do this. He's gonna. I don't listen to that stuff. Even the good stuff people say about me, I just. That's it because it's all bullshit at the end of the day. I, I appreciate it, but it's all bullshit. All the, all the fucking monkey and banana emojis and bad English on my page, that's gonna be coming on my page pretty soon as well, my next post, I'm sure, because that's the same thing that happened last time I whooped his ass in this arena. Um, yeah, meh, you don't listen to it. All I, I just focus on myself, my team, my loved ones, and yeah, we get shit done. You've been racially abused before. It's not the first time something like that didn't happen when you were in Auckland. We talked about this growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and you handled it a little different this time. You posted it. Um, talk about how and how often that happens. Oh, it's just water off a duck's back now. I'm just trying to show you a little glimpse into my life a little bit. But this is life, you know. I'm sure you know as well as a black man. It's just, it's life. You just, you deal with it. But it's, yeah. Yeah, it's shit. You come from a country that is practically the largest black nation in the world, 200 million. We also come from a continent of 1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. I ask Kamal the same question, I'll, ask, I'll pose this to you as well. You come from a place where hope is not necessarily on a daily basis, but when you fight, you give hope to these people. How important is it for you to get into that octagon and put all those type of performances, knowing that the people watching back there and excited to see you perform, and that gives them hope. It's probably be like 6 a.m. in Niger right now. Um, they were up at 4 a.m. watching me fight. I want to get to that status that when I fight at 4 a.m., the whole country is awake, you know, cheering me on. I want crime to drop. I want all these Yahoo boys to stop whatever they're doing, all the police, Mopo, all of them, stop whatever they're doing just to watch me fight. And the country comes together for on 30 minutes or under to see what kind of magic we create and just relish in that and then feel inspired after that because after Francis won <clears throat> even though he's from Kamaru I was on a high for about a month I was just like fuck yeah this is dope and then Kamaru did his thing and I was like ah let's go we're on top right now three kings and it's just a powerful thing man it's so powerful so I keep I just keep riding that wave man I just keep riding that wave and I want I want I want them to feel this surge I just created. I want them to ride it too into the week. Like when they attack the week next week, anyone in Nigeria who just feels maybe down and out about some shit, attack the week the way I attack this guy. Have fun in there, you know. Don't let all the bullshit saws and wanna try. It's hard to say, and I don't like to romanticize or get political, but it's just 
and I got the bullshit sometimes, you know, all this fucking politicians and corruption and shit, you know, but yeah, um, the young generation I feel will be the ones to save Nigeria because all these old cunts are going to die out eventually. So dad is here and he had mentioned that um, your loss to Yan was a bad day at the office. Would you characterize it as the same thing as well? Yep, 100%. Just a bad day in the office, but now we have a good day in the office. So what were the changes that you made in this fight? Knowing going into uh, that you took from that Yan fight that you made going into this fight, knowing that he was going to try to take you down. Um, I just changed uh, a few things. I don't want to get too much into. I got to go soon, but um, yeah, I've explained a lot on my YouTube already. Check out my YouTube freestyle vendor. Is he over here? Right there. Oh no, no, let him. He, oh, so two seconds. This guy right here. No, go, 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 go. Uh, Terrence McKinney was in here, and he said that he was hanging out in the lobby for hours on end. Who? Just Terrence McKinney. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said he was waiting for you specifically for hours, and he almost gave up, and then you came down, and you kind of made his day, but you took a photo. Mm. Brandon Moreno was just in here, and he said he's wanted a photo of you forever, and then you asked for his photo, kind of made his day outside of really? the title. So what do, you, what do you say when your fellow fighters are waiting in the lobby just to take a photo with you? Yeah, I saw Terrence um, when I think I did my COVID test, so I checked in on something, and yeah, he was excited to see me, but I was just excited that he has a really good, like, big smile as well, and he has good energy. So I was just like, okay, I'll take a photo with you, and then I was like, you're fighting on the card, right? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, definitely, I'll look out for you. And wow, what a fucking performance. And even recently, I started to hear about his story as well, his background, and I'm just like, what a, a, a triumph, you know, what a arise from the ashes of phoenix you know and that's cool and brandon moreno is just another nerd like me and it's just love I, I, if you show me love i'll show you love back i'm not an asshole contrary to popular belief uh, i'm nice to people if you're nice to me even the fans i mean people will tell you oh i met him one time he was a dick well what did you do <laughs> what did you do that made him fucking hate your guts but yeah i mean i'm glad that these people like i said brandon moreno i'm really happy for him and also um, to Figueiredo as well, he handled his loss like a champ. You know, he was classy in defeat, respect to him. Uh, okay, he's a guy that rides a water buffalo, that's cool as fuck, you know? Um, Brandon Moreno collects Legos and, um, pop, um, what do you call it, Funko. Pop cat, funk, funk pop thingies. You know, I've got a few as well. And it's just, uh, I like, and he's so smiley and happy and good energy, we need more of that in the world. So fuck yeah, he needs a platform that he can beam that out there so i'm glad he's on the platform now he can beam that out there to the world was that a hanya mask that you wore when you walked in yes uh, any specific reason for that one it's just the mood the mood yeah i don't know i'm just it's the heat of the desert or something i don't know i was just feeling very running then when brad was back here uh, we asked him about uh, the, your late teammate and it said it kind of weighed on his mind but he had to focus and he's really going to use quarantine as the time to reflect on it and yeah. maybe the emotions will come out then now that the fight is over. Are you in that same category? <sighs> yeah, because we, we all rallied around each other as a team and helped each other uh, through this tough time. Um, so sometimes I had to put my feelings... I, 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 let, I, I, I let them, like last night I did a video diary and I kind of went through them a little bit and I shut it back up, but then in quarantine, I guess we can just pour it all out. Yeah, and yeah, just bask in it, because it's, it's crazy. I just wish the government in New Zealand would just wise enough for fucking once. We're backwards in a lot of things. They just, the referendum, I think last year on cannabis, you know, got denied. And it's like, the whole world is now starting to realize the propaganda about that. And then they're, they're making changes, you know, taxing it, making money, but you still got those old heads, oh no, it's a gateway drug, you know, those guys, they're still around, but they'll die off, these cunts will die off eventually, and the young people will take over, the young people will be the ones to change the world, not these old heads who never even grew up with the internet, um, same thing with this law that they have in place, uh, <clears throat> with um, the, the, because the, Australia was ahead, they, they created like a really harsh penalty for people who blind shot people, and you'd expect New Zealand to do the same thing, but when the bill got proposed, I can't remember how many people passed on it, but it, they, they, it passed. How do you, who, for what reason would you want to pass a bill like that? Oh, if someone walks up to someone who's doing nothing, be it an old man or old lady, whatever, and blind shots them from the back, give them 20 years, standard, because that's like assault. 
with a deadly weapon. Um, but no, someone's like, oh, that's a stupid. Who does that? I don't know. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get political. But you'd expect, I expect better from the government of New Zealand. I'm not a politician. Don't fucking listen to me. I don't know shit about what. I don't know. But yeah, I just know right from wrong. And that was fucking wrong they did to my boy. It was wrong. And they know that too. Jacinda, I don't know who else is in your fucking cabinet. You know it was wrong. You know exactly what to do. I don't know what puppet master is pulling the strings, but you're the leader of the country. You handled the mosque shootings like a fucking champ. Can you please do the same with this shit too? It's, 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 it's more. Two more questions, guys. I gotta go. Oh, man. oh wait, you and you. You the last two. All right, then. So, when the lights shine the brightest, some of the hardest things to do ever is to be yourself and speak freely and act freely. And I, I, I don't really even have a question, man. I just want to tell you, of all these years I've watched mixed martial arts, I want to thank you because when I watch, I can feel that freedom. Give me chills. I can feel it, and it, and it feels good. And I wish everybody could follow in that same footstep of, of what you do. So thank you. I appreciate that, but I mean, this is uh, something I'll, I'll say is the word cringe that gets overused lately. I see it so much. I walked out with the straw hat and the mask. Oh my God, he's so cringe. Can't he just do a normal walkout? Why the fuck would I do that? That's not me. That's not me authentically expressing myself. I, and I had, to, I had to break it down because I was like, why are people saying cringe? Like, I was like, what is cringe? What makes me as Izzy cringe? Cringe is when I see someone do something that I would never attempt, be it good or bad, but when I see someone do something that I would never attempt and it makes me cringe, like, I don't know, base jumping, I'm like, ugh. Like, it's cool, but ugh, I'd never do that. Or something embarrassing, I'm like, oh, why would you be doing that? Like, it's cringe, but they're enjoying it. It's, it just shows that I would never attempt that because I don't have the courage to do that. And not really much, much makes me cringe these days. Um, so when people say that to me, I'm like, oh, you just don't have the nuts to do what I do. Like you said, under the brightest lights, like I said at the weigh-ins, I put this shit on myself. I put everything on the line so when it's time to shine, it's all mine, you know? Um, so but I just want to say thank you for that. Like, that actually gave me chills, and I appreciate, I appreciate you giving you. that. Nah, thank you, man. Last one. Question for you, champ. When he, he tried to rush you on the stage on Thursday, did you know you had him? Because right there, I'm like, if I'm a better person, which I am, but I didn't do it this time, <laughs> I'm like, fight's over with, you already got him. Did you have that mentality? Because you didn't buck at all, you kind of like... I mean, I've been working with this guy. Shout out to my guy, Ryan, from Good Dog NZ. Um, he's been helping me, because I've been busy, you know, so he's been helping me with Toothless, one of my dogs who isn't as social, because I didn't have the time to take her out and stuff. So it kind of re invigorated my love for dog psychology and watching the way dogs interact and the way they use their body posture to communicate and mark their scents and use their anal glands to leave scents in each other's faces. It's where dogs do it. Look it up. Google. But um, yeah, working with him has helped me remind myself of how I used to do that all the time. I read people like coloring books. So easy. And when I was sitting there, and I, I knew he was trying to pretend like he was cool, like he's calm and collected. I'm like, I know you're boiling inside right now. So I started to attack him, and I could feel the energy. And he's like, I'm your fucking nightmare. I was like, do something, bitch, do something. That was the energy I was giving him. And then when he finally broke, I was like, yes. And I didn't move a muscle because he's not a threat. I, he's not. A, he doesn't pose a threat to me. Even tonight when he had my back, like I said, he wasn't a threat to me. When he tried to take me down, it wasn't a threat to me. I wish I timed that knee better, but yeah, that would be in another fight. Do you feel um, any, oh, sorry. Carry on. Uh, do you feel any pressure with the, being one of the three, the three African kings not to be the one to end this beautiful oh, no. streak? Nah, man. I, I, like, this pressure makes diamonds, like I said. Shining, baby. I need more, by the way. But uh, yeah, that's another story for another time. Hey, thanks, you guys. Thanks for staying up. Appreciate you. Easy one, ass. One last one. What? Last one, I was at the Paul Mayweather fight. I cover both sports. No, 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 it's about you, it's about you, it's about you. They, 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 I had somebody come up to me and say that you inspired them, a kid from, a lot of people from in the boxing community, like, who's that African brother from New Zealand that be knocking people out? And they want to know, like, is that swag for real? So they were looking out for you. You got people in the boxing community that support you. I mean, I've met 
you know, the Paul brothers I've met. Some no, 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 I'm talking about fans. Fans, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I love what was happening. I was thoroughly entertained and yeah, I take inspiration from everywhere. Inspiration isn't limited to one certain sport. I take inspiration from fucking dolphins on Instagram. It's fucking cool. 